Hello and welcome to another Magic 2015 gameplay. Today we're taking a look at an Asper artifact slash tempo deck that's made possible thanks to the new expansion that uh, added a bunch of artifact creatures in these colors. So let's take a look at the list real quick. We're running a bunch of reprisals, just a cheap removal spell, and Sanctum Gargoyle, which is uh, pretty much a grave digger for artifacts. Only it's a 2-3 for 4 mana that has flying, so it's actually pretty efficient. And it has a lot of cool synergies in this deck. Vapor Snag is just a good card in a tempo deck that's trying to kill the opponent quickly. For 1 mana we get to waste our opponent's mana and also deal 1 damage. We can also use it on our own creatures to save them, but that doesn't come up that often. Ethereum Sculptor is sort of the glue that holds the deck together. Just 2 mana makes all our artifacts cost 1 less. And uh, we do have a lot of artifacts obviously. So if you have this on turn 2, then you will be able to empty your hand very quickly, which is pretty important if you're trying to be an aggressive tempo deck. Then our card draw comes from Courier's Capsule. We're playing this over Think Twice just because it only costs one blue thanks to Ethereum Sculptor and the activation for one and a blue means for three mana with an Ethereum Sculptor in play we get to draw two cards which is a little more efficient than Think Twice and uh, we can always use this to pump other artifacts we'll see later or just to have more artifacts in play so I kinda like it over Think Twice in this particular list then Asperzoa is a big flying creature for three mana but it does have a drawback, and that's you have to return an artifact to your hand every turn. But uh, thanks to Ethereum Sculptor, that drawback doesn't really matter a whole lot. And it doesn't actually become a drawback if you have something like Sanctum Gargle that you can return to keep returning cards from your graveyard. So it's actually not a real drawback in this deck. It can sometimes be annoying, but usually it's more a benefit than drawback. Then we have Biden of Thassa to draw us a bunch of cards. Since most of our creatures have flying, it's pretty easy to get a hidden and draw a bunch of cards. Also an artifact, so it gets cheaper thanks to our Ethereum Sculptor. Then Sharding Sphinx is our finisher of choice. Flying artifact creature and whenever we hit with artifacts we get blue Thopter artifact creature tokens, which then again trigger this creature again to make more Thopter tokens. So I think once you get a hidden and you don't get hit by a sweeper, you should be able to win the game rather easily. A Glaze Fiend is another interesting card. A 0-1 for 1 and a black. And a bit like Kiln Fiend gets plus 2 plus 2 whenever you do something specific. In this case it's playing artifacts, which is pretty easy in this deck. Darkseal Axe is a 1 mana artifact equipment, so it's a very good card to return with Asper Zoa, especially if you have Ethereum Sculptor in play to make the axe free to cast again. And uh, equipment with all these flying creatures is also pretty good. Traveler's Amulet is something we can sacrifice, also something we can return to the battlefield thanks to Sanctum Gargoyle. So if we have Gargoyle, Asperzoa and Amulet, we can basically get a land every turn. So that's also a nice synergy. Then Darkseal Ingot, an artifact ramp slash fixing card, is not bad. Then we have Tower Gargoyle, a 4 mana 4-4. Four four. And uh, as you can see, this is our third white card. Also gets cheaper thanks to the Sculptor. And then finally we have Tidehole Strix, another flying artifact creature. Flying Death Touch for blue and a black, one of the few cards that doesn't get cheaper thanks to Ethereum Sculptor, but is still a very solid inclusion, can play offense and defense very well. And then taking a look at the mana base, I've decided to limit the number of tapped lands, only playing Arcane Sanctum and Dimir Guildgate, and then playing 7 islands, 4 swamps and 2 plains. Only have 20 lands total, but uh, if you look at Amulet plus Darksteel Ingot, we have enough mana to cast our all spells and we have a pretty low curve as well, so it shouldn't be a problem. Alright, let's jump into a game. 
All right, this opening hand is not very good. Only one land. Uh, hmm. Not great either, but I think we can keep it. We do have the capsule for card draw and some good late game with these two Sanctum Gargoyles. We just need to hit a white land. Opponent on Swamp. So let's just lead with... Um, hmm, this is interesting. Yeah, I think I'll lead with the Capsule. So if we do miss our land next turn, we can at least activate it to look for more lands. While uh, if we play the Glaze Fiend, then sure, next turn we can play this to pump it. But then we don't find a third land and we start falling behind. So I think this is more a late game play. But uh, alright, we did hit our land. So now the question is do we activate it or play the Glaze Fiend? And I think now we can play the Glaze Fiend to get some pressure on the board opponent could very well kill it right away but we could always save it with Vapor Snag Phyrexian Rager not something we really want to Vapor Snag alright let's activate this first before playing our land in case we hit a white land we do not but uh, I will play the Sanctum so next turn we can start playing our gargoyles returning our capsules and stuff no pump for the Glaze Fiend unfortunately Alright, Dark Sealing it. I'm still not sure if our opponent's playing a mono black deck. We'll take it. And no play. There's our own Dark Sealing it. But I think we can uh, just play the Gargoyle now returning the capsule should have left up the sanct oh no wait it doesn't work never mind all right we can pump the glaze fiend and still have vapor snag up all right we sort of recovered from our shaky start and we should be in a pretty good spot now Nightmare that's something worth vapor snagging alright that's an excellent draw we can start generating Thopter tokens and then we can even reprisal the nightmare next turn to be able to keep attacking and even if our opponent kills the sharding sphinx now we have a pretty good board presence already um, unfortunately the thopter tokens don't pump the glaze fiend before damage happens so the six here didn't actually deal six damage but uh All right, flesh to dust on our sharding sphinx, but some of the damage has already been done, and we can also return it with sanctum gargoyle. So there, there's that. An attack for two, because her opponent can't block anyways. Okay. 
think we can play the Dark Seal Ingot and then Gargoyle the Sphinx back. Seems like the play. And we'll do it pre-combat to pump our Glaze Fiend. There we go. And... Suffer the past. Wow. I guess that works. Opponent exiled or Sphinx in response. Uh, we still get to pump. That's a cool play. But there's no board wipes in black that I know of. And this reprisal on the Nightmare should be enough to close out the game. Unless our opponent has a way to gain a ton of life. But I don't think he does. And I th even pumping one of our creatures is enough to win. So let's just make sure here. Because I don't know what this Dark Cell Ingot could do to us. And I think we did it. Alright, that's what the Dark Seal Ingot can do. But all these pumps are gonna be enough because we can equip a token. And yeah, our opponent blocks here. Would have taken five anyways, but now takes a lot more. Alright. I want to thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day! We need to draw something good here. <laughs> okay, that'll do.